About 18 months ago, we bought an empty section of land in sunny WA, and over the next year, our new home was built. I'm slowly working through a mountain of small jobs and projects, some of which you may have already seen. In this video, I'm going to show you how I installed an important addition to my home network, IP cameras. First up, I decided on location and layout. The easiest route for me is to extend cabling and conduit around the inside of the garage walls. To go through the wall cavity and ceiling would mean removing sheets of roofing, which is a bit overkill. There are a few obstacles to avoid, but in the end I'd like to penetrate the wall in two places, which will provide a place for ethernet cables to get outside. Bunnings came through with the goods once again, providing me with all the conduit, fittings and gear that I needed to complete this task. They even have a selection of network cables you can buy, but I was lucky enough to have some on hand. This particular cable has meter marks, so I was able to check that I had enough before I started the job. Let's have a look at the camera. There are many different IP cameras available, but I chose this RioLink RLC410 5 megapixel for its quality versus price point characteristics. This camera has a bunch of features, but I'm most interested in its IP66 rating, RTSP support, and the PoE capability. Let's get into the install. I've got pallet rack shelving around the walls of the garage. This stuff is rated for 1000 kgs, so I feel pretty confident using it as scaffolding, but it's still just a little bit low. Fair warning. Don't do this at home. It passed the wheel test, but I'm sure the internet will have something to say about it. I felt safe, which is what matters most. My server rack is just pushed up against the wall with the door off, so I have access to these wall mount ports and GPIOs. I'm going to add another wall plate next to the existing ones. Those are on the piss, eh? I'm using a wall plate standoff which allows for cable space in behind the keystones, and also a way for the conduit to tie in tidily. I use one of the conduit fittings to mark an entry hole on the standoff, and then use the step drill to cut it out. A Dremel was used to tidy up the plastic burrs and shape the hole. Now I can hold it up on the wall where I wanted it and mark through the mounting holes. Then they're drilled with a masonry bit and I hammered in some wall plugs. Lastly, I can fix it on tight with some stainless 8G screws. Now I can start measuring out my straight lengths of PVC. I'm using some 20mm flexible conduit for the corners. And most importantly, I'm feeding a drawstring through each piece. To fix the conduit to the walls, I'm doing the same as I did with the wall plate. Drilling and installing wall plugs, and then I can use 20mm saddles to fix the conduit to the wall. This process just gets repeated all the way around the internal garage wall. It's quite tricky to do by yourself, but as you can see it's not unmanageable. One thing I would recommend is to break up the sections to no more than two 90 degree bends. Otherwise, it might be too hard to pull the cable through later on. So you can see at this corner, I'm starting a new section of conduit and I've installed a new draw wire. My pallet rack shelving came in handy again once it was all cleared off and allowed me to work along the top below the cornice. Again, I'm doing this at my own risk, you don't have to follow. Just gonna take some flexi out of here. I'll try to tie it in, sort of around here and into that. And um, that like big hole there, got to pump through the middle of that and all the way out the other wall to the outside. Um, that feed out, we'll go for the next camera, but I've run out of poly. This is how I'm planning to connect the flexible conduit and cover my holes through the wall. I used an electric drill and a much longer masonry bit to make the hole outside. I set up the camera to watch it come through and it was really anticlimactic. But it got the job done and now I have a way to push the cable through outside. Yes. That's it. I've installed another one of the conduit junctions outside as a way to cover the hole and protect the cabling from the weather. Then the camera is mounted just below it. The next part is much easier with two people and I got Jace to give me a hand. I'm using tape to tie two cables to the drawstring so they can be pulled through the conduit. 
I'm making sure to tape it on as fail proof as I can. Last thing I want is for the string to tear free and leave the cables halfway. So Jace is actively feeding the cables in from one end and I'm pulling the drawstring from the other, just so the cables don't snag or anything on the entry. Then at the corner, we're using the second drawstring to feed the cable through the next conduit section. Jason is making sure the cables don't kink or bind up. Now I can feed one of the cables through the hole to the exterior. Yeah bro, it's way too much, but it's all good. At least it's out. I trimmed the cable short and fitted on an RJ45 crimp onto the end, which completes that part of the cabling. Back near the server cabinet, I cut and prepped the cables and then used the crone tool to punch the cable into the keystones. Then I can carefully tuck the cables into the cavity of the standoff and screw the wall plate on. Looks pretty tidy in my opinion. To test the camera works, I patched it into my switch and was rewarded with a green light meaning the camera has powered up and it has connection to the network. I got some more conduit to finish installing the second camera. It was essentially the same steps and it wasn't long before I could patch this camera into the network too. This camera will be pointing in the opposite direction to the first camera and I'm aiming to get good coverage of my driveway and also my brother's driveway next door. The last step is to add these cameras into an NVR, in my case I chose Blue Iris, which is a very popular piece of software. I set up a virtual machine with enough capability for processing and recording the streams. The cameras are nice and clear and have a good view up and down the street. Hopefully you guys picked up some tips and enjoyed watching another one of these mini jobs. I'll see you on the next one.